So Ajahn Chah was born in Ubon province in northeast Thailand. And I think the important thing to for people to know about northeast Thailand is it's ethnically um, different, separate from central Thailand. And in fact was separated from central Thailand by thick malarial forests uh, for most of the um, history of, of the country. And so uh, the, the people there are ethnically Lao rather than Thai. They speak a Lao dialect. And there's always a sense of uh, some sense of separation, and and Thai people have somewhat looked down on um, Isan people in the past, as, and and you could almost look on, say they looked upon Northeast Thailand as, as Siberia, you know, and, and people are nobody would ever think of going there, you know, and and the people they're kind of unsophisticated. Um, uh, yeah, unintelligent, th those kinds of prejudices. Um, but Northeast Thailand is also um, the place where uh, most of the great teachers who we look up to as enlightened beings came from, including Ajahn Chah. And if you look on the, the production of arahants, enlightened beings, um, as significant, you could say that, um, you know, it's a great world power. Um, uh, I certainly. Uh, look at it in that way. So, uh, Isan is, is um, has has some more hilly areas um, to the north. Um, hundred years ago, it was quite thickly forested. But in the south of Isan, south of that's the word uh, by which Northeast Thailand is referred, um, it's been cultivated um, for quite a long time. Formerly part of the Angkor Wat Empire way back. You know, hundreds, hundreds of years ago. And um, the part that Ajahn Chah uh, grew up in is called, called Ubon. Ubon is a Thai tra derivation of a Pali word, Upala, meaning lotus. And the area where, where he, he, he was brought up um, is quite a flat area, and it's um, characterized by the river Moon, which is a tributary of the Mekong flows through Ubon province to the east where it flows into the Mekong flowing southwards and uh, the Mekong um, provides the border between Thai and Lao and that's about a hundred kilometers away from the city of Ubon whereas a hundred kilometers to the south um, you reach the, the the line of hills the range of hills which uh, provide the border between Thailand and Cambodia so it's in a kind of little corner of, of the southern part of northeast Thailand. Soil's very, very poor. Um, growing rice um, is, is difficult. The sticky rice that grows can only be harvested once a year. Um, very little irrigation possible. So life, life has been tough for, for people in that area. Ajahn Chah was born in a, a small village called Ban Gaur is a few kilometers to the south of Ubon and on the other side of, of the river and he was um, he, he was born on the 17th of June 1918 into quite a, a wealthy family by the rural standards of those times meaning quite a large um, portion of land to cultivate um, well, I say, I say large, it may be uh, quite a few acres, not, not, we're not talking about hundreds of acres, um, and some cattle and um, tobacco uh, plantation. And he was the fifth of 11 children. Again, as in, as in most cultures at that time, um, families tended to be large because uh, quite a high infant mortality rate and no social security network, so parents would be hoping that their children would um, look after them in their in their old age, and and also I think significantly um, Thai and Lao people. I've said they're separate, but they they come from you know there's more um, unites them and separates them. They seem to have come from the same group of people in southern China originally. Um, they they love children, uh, and so uh, he would have been brought up in a very uh, warm, supportive um, environment. You mentioned that uh, so many of the 
um, people, monks or the sort of rumor to be Arahams come from this area, mm. the Isan or even Ubon province, where it has from. Uh, what are some of the the names that are rumored to to have that kind of attainment? Then? Well, the names that we know about uh, are the disciples of Ajahn Man, because previous um, to um, Ajahn Man, and he he's living in the um, second half of the 19th century, first half of the 20th century. We just don't have any records. Um, so some people believe that there was uh, something new arose with Ajahn Man and that there, there wasn't really any practice going on and people realizing states of attainment before that. Um, and it, it's hard to, to quali qualify whether that is in fact true or not. We don't have the, the support for that. But we do know that there was just an incredible flowering of, of this uh, forest tradition and um, something that was definitely new uh, was the association of uh, intense meditation practice with um, a very um, uh, strict, scrupulous approach to Vinaya and to the ascetic practices. Now those two things have become so unified in people's minds these days, in our minds, that the forest tradition, uh, one, uh, keeps strict veneer, two, meditate. Um, but that, um, that is, it seems to be um, something that really came into being through uh, Ajahn Man and his disciples. So who are we talking about? There's Ajahn Man and, and the monk who was originally his teacher but became his um, teaching partner. Ajahn Sao, um, and then uh, you know, there's a whole galaxy of, of big names, uh, Lumpu uh, uh, Ted, uh, Lumpu Kao, uh, uh, Lumpu uh, Wan, uh, Lumpu, the, all, the, all the Lumpus, Lumpu Li, Lumpu, I don't know, you know, uh, there's... Who was actually from Ubon? Well, well, it's a little bit... Um, uh, difficult to say that in the in the sense that um, Ubon these days is a much um, truncated version of the Ubon of a hundred years ago. That a number of um, uh, the outlying areas of Ubon have now become provinces in their own right. And and at one point, even the the identity of Ubon as a province wasn't that clear cut. It was more like southern Isan and northern Isan. So but you could, you could say that, um, well, Ajahn Man himself, Ajahn Sao, um, then Ajahn Li was from near Ajahn Mahamon's um, village, just about 30 kilometers north of Bon Ajahn Cha, of course, Ajahn, uh, Ajahn Tongrat. Uh, oh, no, I beg your pardon, Ajahn Tongrat was actually um, from, from the Kon Phnom, but it's a little bit complicated because his family were from Obon. And um, who else? Was it was a Lumpu cow, I think, it was from Amnachara, and, and so, so, so many of them. Um, quite, quite remarkable considering the, the population. Um, what was the population? Uh, well, I guess. I would say that the population of Isan, when Ajahn Chah was born, two, three million, something like that. Maybe, mm -hmm. not, not, maybe not so many. But it, it scattered, you know, just very small hamlets, hardly any communication between them. No big cities, really. So probably less than that. 